So tomorrow we're starting our 21 day fast. Somebody say glory to God. So that this is, we do this, we've been doing this since the eighties, uh, since we came and, uh, we do it every January. We do it every August. And it's just a focused time of fasting and prayer as a church for 21 days. We actually start that in the morning at 6 a.m. We will be in here at 6 a.m. Any of you that can join with us, that's wonderful. We go from 6 to 7. Uh, if you're not able to join with us, they'll be broadcasting it from our campus there in Cleveland. You, you could actually join in there with them there at your house or on the way to work, things like that. It's a very powerful time. We've got this 21 days of fasting. This is a little book that tells you all about fasting, tells you different types of fast. It also has a 20, how many know there's 21 days in the book of John? I love that. When, new, when people come to the Lord for the first time, my, I always tell them to start in the book of John and read a chapter every single day. And so in 21 days, they've read through the book of John. Then I tell them, when you finish the book of John, just go right in to the book of Acts, which is where the New Testament church was birthed, and just keep reading. And so uh, that's in here, a little devotion in that. So right now, we didn't get enough made up this week, so we'll have more next week. But uh, so for this morning, maybe one per family, something like that. Uh, they'll have it at Guest Central. And so if you're a guest or a visitor here this morning, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Actually, this next Sunday, the 22nd, we're going to have our Connect class. At, uh, that's immediately following the service. Our Connect class is where you can say, I want to be a member of that church. I want to know more about that church. And so next Sunday, immediately following the service, we'll have a meal together in the dining hall. And you'll get to hear the vision of the church and what we believe and things like that. And then if you decide, man, I think I want to be a part of that church. I want to get connected to that church. You can actually become a member right then. Uh, if you're not sure and you want to pray about it a little more, we, we'll send some stuff home with you. You can look at it and, and make your decision to do that. But I believe this is a good place, come on, to get connected. We are one church in many locations, uh, advancing the kingdom of God together. It's a powerful time. Uh, and also... Uh, okay, I said connect, didn't I? I said prayer, didn't I? Praise God, so I'm about to shift gears a little bit. And we're going to watch this video real quickly, so let's do that. Do you want to get connected? We have a connect class coming up at your campus soon. Connect class is a great way to hear about the church, learn the vision, and meet the team. So if you want to get connected, come to Connect Class 101. To make it easier on you, we provide lunch and child care if needed. Make sure to visit Guest Central if you have any questions, and we hope to see you there. All right, my name is John Mark uh, Dickey. This is my beautiful wife, Jessica. We've been attending the Heights Church since April of 2021. We started attending small groups the following summer. But when I started attending, I was in a time in my life where I was in a spirit of loneliness. But during that time, we started to develop relationships with everybody that was in our small group. These are friendships we're gonna have for a lifetime. My husband's like, yeah, let's get involved. Let's do a small group. And I'm so glad we did. You feel like you're actually connected now. And as before, I didn't feel that. Small groups is where I developed friendships and just where I grew closer to the Lord. I highly encourage you, get involved in a small group, find those people, connect with them, love on them, and don't let them go. Take a deep breath. I feel like preaching. Hey, before I, before I do, though, uh, give it up for that worship team. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. And thank you for your participation this morning as we enter into his presence. Thank y'all for that. Also, uh, uh, the way we, some of you uh, maybe uh, 
come from, I call it the old school in a sense, maybe I shouldn't say it that way, but you're used to uh, the offering plate, or we used to call them buckets. <laughs> Pass. We don't do that here at the Heights. We have uh, cards there in the front, uh, envelopes. You can fill those envelopes out for your offering. And uh, actually, there's uh, places there where this door, this door, and also at Guest Central where you just slip it into there. And, and we just thank each one of you for your giving, for your faithful and giving. We're able to do what we do because of your faithfulness. And how many know it's more blessed to give than it is to receive? And that's where the favor of God comes upon your life when you become a tither in the house of God, the blessing of God upon you. Also, Cherry and Ryan, I shared it with our dream teamers this morning. They're, how many know sometimes you just need a, a break? And so they're out this, this morning and uh, able to have be refreshed, and we just speak blessings over them. Let's pray for them right now. Father, we thank you for Cherry. We thank you for Ryan, Lord God. We, we thank you for the ministry that you've placed within them. And Lord, we just speak blessings over them. We speak refreshing over them. Lord, I thank you even as they come back, Lord God, they're set on fire with a new passion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, somebody say, we love you, Pastor Stephen. Love you, Pastor Stephen. Because we're starting a new series on reset. And how many know the first of the year is a great time to have a reflection and reset? I, I love the first of the year. I love a new beginning. Uh, I love writing New Year's resolutions. Some people might say, well, Brother Stephen, I, I don't believe in that. Let me tell you, if, you're not, if you don't write down something, if you're not believing for something, then you're never going to know if you got it or not. It's, I think it's real important that, to write down some passions, some dreams, some visions, some prayers you want to see answered. Write down some goals that you want to uh, fulfill in your life. It's important at the first year to write it down. I do that. And, you know, when I end the year and, I, and it didn't get done, what, I don't get discouraged. I say, I'm writing it down again. Matter of fact, I don't have to write it down again because I still got it. But I'm going to keep with it. I'm going to keep believing it. I'm going to believe it's going to happen in Jesus' name. So it's, it's a great time to reset in all areas of our life. And so that's one of the reasons we love doing uh, the, the fasting and stuff at the beginning of the year because it's a focus on Him. And it draws the church together and a focus on Him. How many were at the Propel Conference? How many were blessed? Come on, I'm telling you, if you were not able to make our Propel Conference, that's a conference we do at the first of the year, every year at our main campus, central campus. And uh, you can go back online. You can go to our YouTube channel. You can watch all those services. And, man, we had some great speakers. We had tremendous worship, uh, just a powerful time. So I encourage you to do that. This morning, uh, you know, one of the reasons I said we, we love you, Pat, tell us, I want you to just say this out loud. Say, Pastor Stephen. We love, you. we love you. Now, remember, you told me that at the beginning of the sermon. Because <laughs> this subject here, we're going to be talking about fasting, prayer and fasting, mainly talking about fasting this morning. Point one, we fast for a makeover. We fast for a makeover. That word makeover, a complete reconstruction and renovation of something, an overall treatment to improve something or make something more attractive. Come on. These ladies know what a makeover is all about, don't they? But how many know, I'm, I'm going I'm to get ahead of myself just a little bit. Uh, when we're talking about, we're talking about a physical uh, makeover. And, and actually, the, these series here this morning, we're talking about a physical reset. We're going to have four sermons in this series. This first one is a physical reset. And, and it's important. I mean, no, this is the only body we have to carry us around. And so we need to take care of our physical bodies. Yes, we need to take care of our spiritual bodies, but we must also take care of our physical bodies. And so sometimes from now on now, we just need to have a makeover. So fasting is a powerful way to have a makeover sp uh, physically in our life. I'm going to start here in, in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 1. Uh, before I start that, in D Daniel chapter 1, Daniel had captured... Uh, the children, these Hebrew children, they went and captured them. Uh, they, the young men, they brought them back. And he said, I, I'm going to take these young men and I'm going to groom them. And I'm, I'm going to groom them for three years. And I'm going to feed them to keep my delicacies. And they're going to be servants to me in, in my kingdom. So let's start here in uh, Daniel 1.8. But Daniel purposed in his heart. Somebody say purposed in his heart. If we're going to do this, if we're going to fast, we're going to commit to something, we've got a purpose in our heart. If we're going to do anything, the first thing we're going to do is purpose in our heart to do it, that we're going to do it. Somebody say amen. amen. 
that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my Lord, the king who has appointed you food and drink. For why should, you, why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to the servant whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat. Remember when your mama said, eat your vegetables? They're good for you. Come on, somebody. Said vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young man who eat the portion of the king's delicacies. You know, I looked that word delicacies up. It says, full of sugar. <laughs> well, we'll find out. <laughs> oh, a portion of the king's delicacies, as you see fits. So deal with your servants. So in verse 14, so he uh, uh, consented with them in the matter and tested them 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus, the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink. I bet he took them for himself and gave them vegetables. As for these four young men, four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Verse 18. And at the end of the days, when the king had said that they should be brought in. The chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, among them all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they served before the king. Verse 20, I love this. And in all manners of wisdom and understanding about which the king had examined, he found them ten times better. <laughs> ten times better than all the music, uh, mag mag magicians and astrologers. Who were all in all his realm. Fasting does the body good. It's good for you. It, when we begin to fast, it detoxes us. It gets the toxins out of our body. When we fast and we, we do a focused fast. And we're, we're drinking water and we're eating the vegetables. Matter of fact, there's a Daniel fast. It's in that little book. You can look it up. It's where you eat vegetables and things like that. There's all kinds of fast. We'll get into a little bit of that later. But... Man, the big thing about fasting, man, it is a reset. It is a reset for your body. It's a resting your body. It's a cleansing of your body. I have found out in my life when I begin to do a focused fast and begin to cleanse myself from some of these detoxins, I think better. The Bible becomes more alive to me. I can see it clearer. I can understand better. There's clarity that begins to come to my life. I have, I have a better strength, more uh, energy with me when I'm doing that. Now... The first sermon I ever preached, some of you may have heard me share this before, and Jalen can tell you, after that eight years of drug addiction, I'd look back now and see what God was doing. Because when he delivered me from the drugs just like that, and I got, was set on fire for God, I uh, began to put the Word of God on the inside of me, been in church ever since. Along with that, there was just something in me. God didn't tell me to do it, but I'm like, I ain't drinking these Cokes no more. Not only did I quit drinking the alcohol, I quit drinking all this other stuff. Matter of fact, I went on a complete health, uh, I don't know if you call it diet or whatever, but I went, I just totally went extreme. I won't get into all that, but, but I went very extreme. And I, I was, the purities, what I realized were getting out of my body. I began to eat right and do these things. And so I believe that was part of breaking that addiction. I believe because I began to not put that junk in my body and, and I was cleansing my body in that, that that was part of me staying free from that stuff because it was getting that addiction. How many know we can have an addiction to all kinds of food? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> and and it, 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 we, we think we cannot live without it or we will die. Oh, you still love me. <laughs> I'm going to let the Holy Spirit just breathe on some of you and, and just uh, bring, speak to you on what God is saying to you. And I got good news for you before we end the message. But, uh, man, I can remember, uh, you know, as I begin to do that and God, I begin to really devour the word in that area. The word has things to say about that. We read a little bit of it about it just then. Isn't that amazing that the king's feeding them those delicacies and these guys just ate vegetables and and water, and they were smarter, 
Be- they, they, were, they were better looking. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> Somebody want a makeover this morning? Let's eat our vegetables. Come on, young people. Let's just focus in that. But as, as I focused in on that and, and this cleansing taken, and I, I saw the revelation of this. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of treading lightly, Jalen. So we were in the Baptist church, and uh, we were teaching Sunday school and things like that, and then we had a layman's revival. Well, I'd already gotten filled with the Holy Ghost. And I, I had dunamis dynamite power on the inside of me, but I was seeking God, what do you want me to share? And uh, so we, the revival started on a Friday. They called it a layman's revival. They had me, this was my first sermon to ever stand in the pulpit and preach. This was like in 1982, I think it was. And so he gave me this scripture about food and these things. And you got to understand, this is a Sunday morning. I don't know if you were raised up in the Baptist church, but in most churches, this is the way it's like anyway. We were going to end the, this finale of this layman's revival with a huge dinner out in the fellowship hall. Mm. And so what God had showed me is cocaine is a white foreign substance that has no place in the human body. And sugar is a white foreign substance that has no place in the human body. (laughs) I'm just going to laugh a little bit. But do I still eat sugar? Help me, Holy Ghost. Yes, it's hard. But I was in these days I did not. And there's a tremendous, you could feel a tremendous uh, difference in all areas of your life when you begin to do that. But I did preach that this morning, matter of fact, uh, on, on that morning. Matter of fact, there's a scripture in the book of Proverbs that says the, the glutton and the drunkard, uh, it talks about the glutton and the drunkard and these things. And every place you find the word uh, glutton, drunkard is in the same, same verse. And so what are they talking about there? It's a spirit. Mm, somebody said, I wish I'd stayed home. <laughs> well, it's too late unless you run out. So what I shared with them that morning, we will condemn the drunkard, but it's the same spirit. And we will be gluttons. And then I took it a little too far. I said, we're about to go out and have dinner after this. Just wait till you see this table with all of the delicacies all of the sweets, and just listen. You'll walk in and you'll hear this, mmm, ah, oh, ah, and all this going on about the desserts. I'm trying to help somebody. I really am. And uh, it didn't go well. I'm hoping it goes better this morning. (laughs) Uh, It was like demons manifested and they were ready to crucify me. I never got to preach again there. Praise God. (laughs) But I'm, I like to preach truth, and I want to help you this morning. It's real. It, it, it is, uh, most sicknesses that we end up with and diseases, when you go to a specialist or to a doctor, it stems back to what we're feeding ourselves, what we're putting in our body. And do you not know the devil that comes to steal, kill, and destroy? And he's very subtle in the way he does it. I'm praying this morning there's going to be something happen within us that says, listen, I'm not going to die before my time. And I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to have to rise up and say, I ain't eating that stuff. I ain't putting those delicacies in my body anymore. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to be focused in Jesus' name. Now, let me see. It says, uh, uh, let me go ahead and go to point two. Does that sound good? Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise say, keep moving, Pastor. Keep moving. Uh, point two, we fast for mercy. Jo- Jonah 3, 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. That's everybody. John, Jonah 3.10, then God saw their works that they turned from their evil ways and God relented from the disaster that he said he would bring upon them and he did not do it. The best way to receive mercy in our, in our life is to fast and pray. When we're going through a difficult situation, what we already said, most of us are probably in something this morning. I'm telling you, Jaylen, and I can testify, there's been seasons in our life where we go to fasting something. On that, for that situation, and we will begin to experience God's mercy in a greater measure. A mercy to do what he's called us to do. So fasting and prayer is a powerful way to begin to see the mercy of God come into our life. In jo- Joel chapter 2, verse 12, it's, it's actually turning to the Lord with all our hearts. 
It says, Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. So rent your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Come on, I love our God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger. That's, that wasn't like my dad. Come on. My dad was quick to anger. My dad was quick to t- put me over his knee and wear me out. My God is slow to anger. Did any of you, was you raised up in a home or in a church where it felt like God's up there with this big stick waiting for you to mess up to hit you over the head? Anybody? What's that game they play? <laughs> it's not, this was a picture of that. If you know that whack ball, they're popping up. And it's like, oh, that, he messed up, he messed up, he messed up, she messed up, she messed up. That's not our God. He's merciful. He's long-suffering. Oh, I better keep going. Slow to anger and great with kindness. And he relents from doing harm. Mm. Who, who knows? Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave up a, us a blessing in, behind in him? A grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Verse 15, blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and the nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bridegroom from her dressing room. We want mercy. I'm tell- Who needs mercy? Can I tell you, his mercies are new and fresh every single morning. I love that. If I mess up today, I can rise up in the morning and there's new mercies for that day. And if I mess up that day, I can rise up the next day and there's new mercies for that day. His mercies are never ending. His love never fails. His love never quits. His love never runs out. Point three, we fast for miracles. Anybody need a miracle? Mm. Anybody know somebody that needs a miracle? We'll start this over. How many need a miracle? Raise your hand. Leave it up. How many know somebody that needs a miracle? Raise your hand. All the hands are up. I'm glad. Our God is a miracle working God. And I'm telling you, there's something about when we become obedient. There's something about when we turn to the Lord with all our heart. There's something about when that obedience begins to say, God, I see it in your word. And because it's in your word, I'm going to obey your word. I'm going to, I'm going to do what you're, telling me, you're asking me to do. How many know we love it when our children are obedient? We, when our children are obedient, and I had a son that was... Uh, it's crazy to say it like this. It was almost like overly obedient. Can you be overly obedient? Let me tell you, when you have son, a son that was overly obedient, do you think he, the blessing, I wanted to bless him? <laughs> come on. He, be, he was such a blessing and still is such a blessing. And there, there was something in me like, come on, what do you need? <laughs> oh, come on. When we obey him and when we're doing what he asks us to do, I'm t- it captures his heart. We capture his heart. It captures his eye. He's looking at us. He, 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 he wants to bless us. He does. We, we're fasting for miracles. Daniel 10, 2. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three, four weeks. I ate no pleasant food. No meat or wine came into my mouth. Nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Da- this is where we begin to get the Daniel fast, a 21-day fast, as we said, out of, out of Daniel. In Daniel 10.10, suddenly a hand touched me and made me tremble on my knees and on my palms of my hands. And he said to me, oh, Daniel, man, greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day, somebody say the first day. That you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard. And I've come because of your words. Verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. Listen. We fast for miracles. We fast for breakthrough. What was actually happening there, Daniel had went on a fast, a 21-day fast. He'd went on, I don't think he was planning on 21 days, but he just went on a fast because he was petitioning God. 
He didn't know how, when it would end, but if for, he went on a fast. He's seeking God. He's believing for God. Some of you are believing God for great things. He was seeking God. He was believing for a miracle. He was believing for a breakthrough. And he says, when, when the, the angel came, see, it was an angel. He said, Michael, you know what I mean? There, there was an archangel. The warring angels were preventing that word to come. I, I want to encourage you this morning. Some of you have prayed prayers and you're wondering if God has heard you. Yes, God has heard you. He's heard the cry of your heart. Then why ain't it happening? There's warfare. The enemy's trying to prevent it from happening. Come on, somebody. But we got to be persistent. Somebody say persistent. We got to be consistent. We got to focus in. We got to not give up. Don't ever give up. Come on, keep pressing in in Jesus' name. Daniel did not quit. He didn't give up. He kept pressing in. Come on. And then the answer came on the 21st day. We heard you on the first day. On the 21st day, the breakthrough come. The breakthrough came. And that's where we get this 21 days of breakthrough. We've experienced this. I, I, I really don't want to get off all into this, but I'm telling you, there's been seasons in our life. Man, when I came under Pastor Ferris, he was a man of fasting and prayer. I am who I am because of sitting under this man. And at, for years, man, uh, every 21, the 1st of January, him and I fasted with nothing but water. 21 days. Just water. It's nice to have somebody with you that, that's fasting the same thing. And... and then it began to be water and juice for 21 days. I'm telling you, you talk about revelation. You talk about getting close to God. You talk about some breakthroughs coming. And we were standing uh, on behalf, not for us. We were standing on, on behalf of the congregation. If, you, if everything's well with you and you can't fast for yourself, fast for this church. Fast for the Heights Church, all the campuses. Fast for your pastors. Fast for somebody else. And believe God for miracles to come forth. Back in a... Uh, and let me, while I'm thinking this, I want to say it. So if you do go on like a, a fast, especially husbands, if you go on a fast and you're going to do a, a water fast or a juice fast or something like that, make sure you tell your wife. Because, and, and I learned this from experience, if you, if you didn't tell your wife and you get home that day and she's cooked your favorite meal, but you're already fasting, or let's say this, or... There's the favorite brownies. And my, she can cook some, bake some brownies. What do you do? You may give you some wisdom right now. You eat it. <laughs> hey, we already read our God's a merciful God. He's a good God. You eat it. Come on. You eat it. And, uh, when you get through eating, you say, baby, that was the best meal. That was delicious like it always is. But I'm, I'm about to go on a fast. <laughs> Not because of your food. I'm a, I just know I'm about to go. And, and then you, you just go back to the fast. Does that make sense? I'm, helping, so I'm getting off. There is no condemnation in our God. And we're, we're free in this. Uh, so let's look at uh, Matthew 7:14. And when they had come to the multitude, we're talking about fasting for miracles. A man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he's an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls in the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Verse 17, then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then verse 19, the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? Listen to this. So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. For surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing, nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Now, I've heard people preach stormy on this a lot. And when they said this type kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting, they always talk about this type of demon. I don't believe that's what it's talking about. And the reason I don't believe that's what it's talking about because Jesus, he's given us authority to cast out de demons. Go ye in all the world, preach the gospel of every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And, and, and we will, in our name we will cast out devils. That's one of the things he said we would do. And so I don't think that's what he's talking about. Jesus, at, the, at a word, 
They have to obey. And Jesus is in us. We are his children. We, he's given us the authority to cast out devils in Jesus' name. I believe he's, when he said this kind does not go out except by fasting and prayer. What's he talking about? Unbelief. Most of the time we don't see prayers answered because we don't believe. We're not, we're, we're, we, we don't believe it can happen for us. Or maybe he'll do it for Pastor Stephen, but will he do it for me? Yes, he will. He'll do it for every single one of us in this room. Come on, somebody. Is everybody okay? I'm not clicking this morning, Emma. I'm just checking. Praise God. Praise God. Mm, Matthew 6, 16. Matthew 6, 16. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Or surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now, I just want to say this. There's nothing wrong with corporate fasting. There's nothing wrong with coming together like we're doing and we're going to do a corporate fast. You see that all through the word. It's there. You can find it. But so what's he saying here? When we fast, we're fasting that he will see us. I'm, I'm fasting so I can see him. I'm fasting that he'll see me. I want to see him. And I want him to see me being obedient to say, God, I need you. God, I want you. God, I'm going to give this up for you. I'm going to give that up for you. Our motivation in fasting should always be to obey God and draw closer to him to be more like Jesus. Jesus fasted. His disciples fasted. We are his disciples. Mm. Are you all ready for some good news? So fasting isn't always a food fast. It doesn't necessarily have to be a food fast. Fasting is something that you'll give up for a season for the Lord. What's dear to you? I mean, it, it could be social media. It, it could be your phone. It could be video games. It could be, uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, uh, it, it could be uh, for 21 days, I'm not going to uh, shop. Uh, for 21 days, I'm not going to buy anything from, off of Amazon. Oh, oh, Pastor Stephen, I went to Madeline now. <laughs> oh, did I say that? Y'all still love me. Y'all already told me. What I'm trying to say is it could be different for every one of us. And so we're not going around, you know, I'm fasting, praise God. Well, I just got my reward. No, we're, we're doing it unto him. And, and it's what he asked you to do. What is God asking you to do? You know, I, there's a, the rich young ruler came to the Lord and was asking him these things. And, and so Jesus responded to him and the rich young ruler didn't like what was said and he walked away sad because uh, basically what he was saying, what, this thing, he loved it more than he loved Jesus. And so I've come to find out he will ask you to something that's dear to you. C can I tell you, we... We need to make a decision right now if I'm going to enter in with the church. And it's not just here. We've got, uh, goodness, how many campuses we got now counting La Fuente? Seven? Seven counting La Fuente? Seven. Campuses. We're all doing this together. There's a lot of us. And we're fasting for each other. We're fasting for the, uh, our communities. We're fasting. Uh, and, and so we'll do something. It, it can be just a, whatever. And if it's your first time, if you've never done a full water fast or if you've never done, man, you may need to talk to your doctor first. And matter of fact, those books, we got one right now. I don't know how far they'll go, but start out with one for every family. And I'm going to have some more of them for next week. It tells you all this information to be smart in what you're doing. And man, especially, you know, depending on what kind of job you're doing when you're working hard and athletes and things like that, you got to be smart when you're doing this. We, uh, man, and how many, how many appreciate Lucy being here this morning? You know, Jalen and I have lived such a blessed life, and we're, we got a lot of life left. And it meant, a lot of y'all know we were youth pastors some 22 years, and we had the honor of having uh, some great young people come through our youth ministry, and, and they're in the ministry. Lucy was actually in our youth ministry. 
And I love this young lady. Just love the, her passion. Love her. You, you can tell she goes to the secret place before her father and worships. And back in the year 2000, some of you may not remember, but in the year 2000, it was supposed to be the end of the world, you know, the computers are all supposed to go out and all this kind of stuff. And there was also a very important election going on with what was going to take place in our nation. Anybody ever caught, heard of Lou Engel? Lou Engel. They called him Rockin' Lou Engel. Man, I, I, I had the honor to be able to sit at a table with him. This man is amazing. He fasts. He, he's, he's like John the Baptist. He's an animal when it comes to fasting and seeking God and just, just so powerfully. Well, he called a 40-day fast. Jalen can testify to this. Called a 40-day fast. I've done several 21-day fasts. And, and I, listen, you better hear God. But I knew God was speaking to me. Not only did he call a 40-day fast, and this was nationwide to a whole lot of people coming in. And, and, and it ended, the 40-day fast ended at Washington, D.C. on the Washington Mall. There was about 400,000 of us showed up there at the Washington Mall. And we, we went for, for 12 hours. We got there at 6 that morning to 6. It was 12 hours of fasting and praying and crying out for this nation. How many know we need to do that again? We need to cry out for this nation. And it's not going to happen without us, a church, getting serious about fasting and praying and seeking God. Let me tell you about those 40 days. Man, I, I, I uh, went through the 21 days. That, that was a piece of cake because I've done it before and knew how to navigate it. You know, and I was drinking water and juice. And then uh, we got to the 21 days. I'm like, dude, I ain't even but halfway there. <laughs> and, uh, man, I continued, man, God will give you grace. And, and it was the most amazing time in my life. I said I was going to do it again. I haven't done it yet since 2000. But uh, it can be done, guys. Food is overrated. And, and personally, I think all of us, including myself, eat way too much than what we really need. You know, some of you may just say, I'm just going to eat smaller portions. Things like that. Just sacrificing somewhere. Amen. Y'all still love me? Now, here's what I want to give you. Set goals. You want to write this down. Set goals. I'm talking about you need to set goals. Why are you fasting? What are your spiritual goals? Spiritual renewal, reconciliation of relationships, guidance, guidance in some life decisions, healing, a resolution of some problems, grace to handle difficult situations. That's just examples. Sit down. What is it? that you, Man, you got to write it down. Remember like, a week ago or so, I don't know when we preached it, I write the vision down, make it plain that they may run with it. So you need to write it down, these 21 days. What are you believing God for? What are you going to do? Make your commitment. Make your commitment. Somebody say, set goals. Set goals. Make your commitment. Make your commitment. Pray about and decide the kind of fast you're going to do. Water only, water, juices, maybe something you think you can't live without. Desi decide and commit to what, uh, how much time each day you will spend with God in prayer and, and in His Word. Can I tell you, let me... Let me tell you, I, I remember doing fast. I remember doing some 21-day fast, but I stayed busy. I was just as busy as I was. And so the 21-day fast, I needed to be cutting some things out so I could sit with Jesus more, that I could worship more, that I could have some alone time with God. Can I tell you, I don't know how many 21-day fast I went on, and I feel like it was for naught. Because I, I stayed with my busy life. I didn't change anything with my busy life. And, and so, you know what I ended up with that 21 days? Irritable and hungry. <laughs> and so we can say, okay, I'm fasting. I'm, I'm, I'm going on a, uh, I'm starving myself, so to speak. But not get anything out of it. Because the focus has to be right. And, and we got to. And we'll get into some more of this, but this is what's going to help you through the fast. The more you slow down and get this word in you, that's what's, this is your daily bread. And you'll get filled up with this daily bread and help you tremendously. Expect results. Say expect results. If we sincerely humble ourselves before the Lord, repent, pray, and seek God's face, we will experience a heightened awareness of his presence. The Lord will give us fresh new spiritual insight. We will feel spiritually refreshed. We will feel closer to God. And we will see answers to prayer. I believe uh, we're going to see breakthroughs in 21 days. How many is going to believe for that? 
I, I, I challenge every one of you to do something. Something. It, it, I don't care how small it is. Do something. And it don't even have to, like I'm saying, it don't have to be food. Man, maybe you're going to, man, I'm going to get up a little earlier and I'm, I'm going to at least, for 21 days, I'm going to at least get five minutes into this word. Praise God. We took a group of young people to this, this out in Alabama to this oh, little camp type deal. And uh, it was all about fasting and prayer and, and these things like this. And while we were there, they had a, what they called a 30-30 a club. And I've been doing this for a while, so I, I just let them go ahead and do it. You know, these young people was on fire because you can get on fire when you're in a place around a bunch of other people on fire. And so they all committed to this 30-30 club, 30 minutes in the Word and 30 minutes in prayer. They committed to it. I said, oh, help them, Holy Ghost, because I've committed to those things before, and it didn't <laughs> help me. It became a law. It became religion. It became it was no fun. And so uh, these young people, about a month after we got back, they came and said, Pastor Stephen, we, we're defeated. We can't do it. And I said, well, man, that's all right. I said, God's merciful. He's graceful. He, he's not mad at you. He's not upset at you. But I said, let me ask you something. Do you think you could give five minutes a day, just five minutes in the Word, five minutes in the morning, and then five minutes talking to God? That's 10 minutes. You think you could do that? Oh, yeah. After trying to do it for an hour? I could give you, I could do that, Pastor. I could do 10 minutes. So I started a 5-5 five, five club. Five minutes in the Word, five minutes in prayer. You've got to start where you're at, and then God will take over from there. So I, if you've not been a, regularly doing that, let's just see what would happen in 21 days if you gave five minutes in the morning, which ends up being five minutes in the Word. In five minutes, just talking to God. Ten minutes. And some of you do it on the way to work, driving in the car. That's wonderful. So when I was preparing this message, and I'm going to close with this, it was like God was saying, I, it, was, it came on me hard and heavy. It's time. It's time. It's time. And he, he wouldn't let off. He, he wouldn't let me off of it. I'm like, yeah, I know it's time. I got to get up. <laughs> It's time. We do have to get up. It's time. It's time. It's time. And then he began to just say some things to me. Now, I want you to listen to this. Some of you have been praying for your kids to come into the kingdom. Shout, it's time. Some of you have been praying for your spouse. Some of you have been praying for your family members. I wish you'd say it like you mean it. Some of you have been praying for your neighbors. Some of you have been praying for your coworkers. Some of you have been praying for your finances. Some of you have been praying for health and healing. I would you shout that real loud. Some of you have been praying for direction and clarity. Some of you have been praying for understanding the word of God. Some of you have been praying for your heavenly language. Some of you, of you have been praying for your next step in ministry. Some of you have been praying for our nation to turn to God. Some of you, this church especially, has been praying for laborers into the harvest. It's time to stop our backbiting and gossiping. It's time to get rid of all anger, bitterness, and pride. It's time to seek God first and turn from our wicked ways. It's time to forgive those who have hurt us. It's time to forgive those who have offended us. It's time to make things right with everyone and with God. Somebody stand to your feet all over this room and shout, it's time. It's time. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. It's time. Today's the day. Today is the day. We, we got to do it now. Now is the time. Lord, we can't wait any longer. Our days are numbered, Lord God. We need to take the day as a day. Today is the time. If not now, when? If we don't change our eating now, when are we going to do it? It's killing us. It's slowing us down. If there's some things, if there, there's some things that if we don't change now, Possibly will never change. God says, I've got the power. Trust me. Come to me. Lay it before my feet. Oh, lay it before my feet. The Lord is saying to you, whatever it is, bring it to him. Write it down.
Terry, we may need to have a bonfire right outside here somewhere at some point and write it all down and watch it go up in flames. Father, I just speak peace over everyone that's hearing my voice. I speak impartation. And Lord, you have put a fire in me to go after you with all of my heart. Lord, I pray that would be transferred this morning. A fire, a passion in Jesus' name to go after you, God, with all of their heart. And Lord, we, we thank you. We're fasting for a makeover this morning. You're going to make us over. We're not going to look the same. We're not going to act the same. We're not going to talk the same. We thank you for that. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we're, we're fasting this morning. Lord, we're fasting, not only for makeover, Lord God. Lord, we're fasting for miracles. God, we're fasting. What was point two, somebody? Mercy. mercy. Lord, we're fasting for mercy. Lord, I pray mercy on us to be able to walk through these 21 days drawing closer to you. Lord, we're fasting these 21 days. And we're looking for mercy, Lord, to finish the race. Lord, and see miracles in this house. Miracles in every house that's represented here. Provision to come in. Finances to come in. Checks in the mail. Vehicles being given away. Lord, I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Testimonies coming forth of needs in this house that were met supernaturally. Because you are a supernatural God that loves your kids. Thank you for it, Father. Prayer team, come on up. If you need further prayer, this prayer team will be here as we dismiss you in just a moment. Uh, it, if you did not, if you filled one of those cards out, we actually have a gift for you. If you're a guest here this morning, you fill that gar- card out and stop by Guest Central. They'll have a gift for you. We'd love for you to do that. If you don't have a church, we pray this would be the church. You say that's my church. We love each one of you. Thank you for being here. We always at the Heights Church want to give opportunity for people to receive the Lord. If you're here this morning and you've never asked Jesus to come into your life and be Lord of your life and you say, today I need to do that, just lift your hand, anyone. I need to do that. I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life, anyone. Is there anyone standing here this morning that says, there's some things I need to get right with God. Anybody, lift your hand. Lift your hand. Things I need to get right with God. It's okay. Say, well, Stephen, Pastor Stephen, we still got our eyes open. It's okay. We're not ashamed. We're brothers and sisters in here. We're family in here. We're fighting this good fight together. Together we are better. Praise God. Let me just send you out with a blessing. Just put your hands out like you're going to receive something because you are. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace. God bless you. Dios te bendiga. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. We pray that you have been blessed by God's word. For more information, visit us online at heightslife.org.